All right, so despite the fact the repeal is now official, the debate over the sea change in military policy, it will continue. Retired U.S. Marine Sergeant Brian Fricke is an Iraq War vet and a member of the Board of Directors for the Service Members Legal Defense Network. And Chuck Donovan is Senior Research Fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me this afternoon. Sergeant Fricke, I want to start with you. What should happen now and what is likely to happen? Well, thank you for having us again. Uh, you know, we're very excited. The hate industry is shrinking by the day. Uh, right now, uh, General Mullen, our, our Secretary Mullen, he needs to. Um Pardon me. Okay. Uh, Secretary Gates needs to uh, modify the policy and uh, encourage uh, the uh, give guidance to the Joint Chiefs so that they know exactly the policy is no more discharges. That investigations will cease. Uh, we're, we're like I said, we're very enthusiastic about the, these developments. Um, but yeah, that's exactly what needs to happen. He needs to uh, encourage change. All right, so uh, Chuck, and let me show you what the Vice President uh, had to say about the new policy this weekend on Meet the Press. Take a listen. We will not be squandering the abilities of combat soldiers as well as interpreters who happen to have a different pre sexual preference, who happen to be gay or happen to be lesbian. Whether you are gay or straight does not affect whether you can shoot straight or whether you can speak Urdu. Chuck, so do you agree with the vice president on this point? Well, I think one of the things that Congress needs to do is, is probably have some hearings that look into the remaining issues that fortunately weren't heard at the end of this session. The ones that are, I think are the most concerned, particularly with respect to the religious rights of members of the military, also as well as the rights of chaplains. Can they continue uh, to speak in their religious traditions about these things in the military? I think those things would have been better addressed ahead of time, but, but I think Congress can certainly look at that. Uh, so Sergeant the, religious Frick, community, the religious community is not going to be infringed uh, by any means. This is actually the very point. We do not want our rights infringed, and we don't want the other, the rights of others to be infringed. This, again, this is about equality. That's the, the radical social agenda is for equality. Sergeant Fricky, I want to have you take a look, though, at what uh, Republican Senator John McCain had to say about the repeal over the weekend. We are doing great damage, and we could possibly and probably, as the Commandant of the Marine Corps said, and I've been told by literally thousands of members of the military, harm the battle effectiveness, which is so vital to the support, to the survival of our young men and women in the military. So what's your reaction when you hear that? Sergeant Fricky? I want to ask you, what's your reaction? I know that John McCain obviously is a hero in this country for his military service, for what he's done for this country. Uh, he's also a prisoner of war. But when you hear something like that, do you think that he's going to look back on this and history is going to show him to be on the wrong side of what history has to say about this? Most definitely. A lot of people are on the wrong side. We are professional war fighters, and this is, we don't get distracted by, by petty things like that. Uh, he's, very, he's very much incorrect. Uh, General Amos has since uh, issued a statement saying that the, the Marine Corps would lead the way in this. They would step out smartly uh, and discharge their duties uh, with honor. Uh, he said that uh, his sergeant's major uh, will uh, take on personally this implementation and, uh, and lead the way. So I'm confident the Marine Corps can, uh, can adapt to this change as they always do, adapt and overcome, and they will uh, press on. There will be, be a better fighting force for it. And Chuck, in your opinion, how is this different from the same arguments that we've heard in the past uh, when the military began to accept African Americans and also women into the ranks, especially uh, when you consider that the fears that were expressed during those debates proved to be unfounded? Well, I, I think you have to realize that a behavioral characteristic is certainly different from a neutral characteristic. And in fact, the military pondered a little bit on this by saying it will treat uh, the new gay service members as single individuals. They're still uh, going to have to deal with the issues of what do we do with family benefits? Are we going to recognize marriages from the handful of states that have them? So the military is going to be in the thick of that. It's not quite the same situation. Uh, but Chuck, do you respect the fact that there are gays and lesbians that are protecting your freedom right now that aren't allowed to serve openly? I think every American should re respect that individuals are willing to serve. They've always served. I think what the question is here is respect to these other issues of religious liberty and, mi and military family policy. And those are things about which Americans feel pretty strongly. And so far, they've backed marriage in all these contests across the country. And, uh, the Sergeant Frick, how do you respond to that? Yeah, the working group did an excellent uh, job at identifying specific issues, either family readiness issues, uh, benefits. Uh, actually, I was part of a, a, another uh, group that got to go down to the Pentagon and speak with these uh, these leaders, a part of that uh, study group, and we helped them identify those. And just a few of them, uh, obviously, reinstatement issues. Uh, people that were discharged under Dynast Hotel had a negative reenlistment code. They were not allowed to, to return. So those, those issues, specifically uh, daycare access for 
uh, partnered, uh, maybe maybe they're partnered and one is in the military and the other one's not and they may have adopted a child or, or not. And uh, allowing access to the base for that, that partner, there's lots of those types of things. There's a big misnomer, another red herring by the other side saying, oh, you know, DOMA is affected by this. And really, DOMA is a separate issue that will be addressed uh, through the courts or through legislation. Uh, don't ask hotels repeal has nothing to do with that. It, it really is about open, uh, open uh, service and uh, safe and open service. And that's what SLDN uh, is, is going to be continually fighting for uh, through over the next uh, six months to a year as they uh, begin implementation. Gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining me this afternoon, Sergeant Brian Fricke and Chuck Donovan. Again, uh, thanks for both coming on. Thank you.